right thing to do. So we have many line items. I understand you've tabled quite a detailed set of recommendations for each of these line items and we'll be providing that as part of our communications. Mm -hmm. I had one uh, last question. What's your direct experience been with government programs? So what, what, what uh, role have they mm -hmm. played in uh, creating enterprise, supporting it, uh, past, present, <laughs> this is a very good question and, and, and I can be uh, uh, quite positive about it. If you go back, let's say, 20 years ago, actually a little more than 20 years ago, Mitel applied for an IRAP fund. IRAP is a great program. We, we were granted, and it is a grant, not repayable, we were granted $250,000. Now from that $250,000 and with a lot of sweat equity and our own efforts and so on, we developed a product called the Essex 200. This was a dramatic thing uh, for Canada. Here's a company, Mitel, never been in the world business before, developed a new product. In five years, this company went from no market share, no countries, to 90 countries, 20% of the world's marketplace for this type of product, at the time called PVXs. And as if there isn't enough, the share price jumped from $3 a share to the equivalent of 600 and it made many, many very wealthy people, including myself in Canada. Now that, that's one example of a very small amount of money, even then, I mean, $250,000, not exactly a lot. But then later on, I started up a company called Newbridge. That was 1986. In that particular case, there was a program, uh, a TPC program, which is matching funds. Uh, in that case, I applied for a $5 million uh, fund, repayable $5 million fund with matching in fact, I went through three of those, so five million, later on another five million, later another five, so $15 million invested, one could argue, by the Canadian government, but remember, repaid. Uh, now, in that particular case, I mean, let me explain to you, Newbridge became a worldwide company, uh, and I, I really mean worldwide. Even to this day, if you go to South America, if they want to buy a switching system, they call it a new bridge. I mean, to this day, it's become a generic name throughout South America. So the company grew uh, before it was sold to Alcatel, just to table that. The company did $720 million of business in that quarter. So it grew to be a $3 billion enterprise. And uh, I mean, it's pretty widely known. I sold it for $7.5 billion. Made many, many wealthy people in Canada. Now, in my career, I've started up over 80 companies. Most of those companies I start myself with my own uh, funds and so on, select the people, select the target market, drive it very hard. I start up at this time roughly four companies a year, just to table it, and I pretty much use my own funds. But then as the companies grow, and suddenly they need to start selling the product around the world, I typically look for a second round of funding from the, the original funding. And sadly, last few years, no VC funding available. I go to London, and I'm known very well in London. I go to the US, I'm known very well in the US, and I can find ways of pulling funding in. This is why many, many companies that are in trouble come to me and say, Terry, you know, I, I need this funding, I'm going to another round, I mean, who do you suggest I talk to, clunk, clunk, clunk. But sadly, it's, uh, I mean, the whole VC thing in Canada has pretty much gone dry. And it's very sad. I mean, I can help some people, but I, I can't boil the ocean. There's just, there's way too many. Even the people that I know line up, and, and I, I mean, I simply, I, I have a busy day. I mean, I can't, I cannot look after everybody, but I certainly, you know, do what I can when I can, because I care about Canadian industry. And this is, it, it's very sad right now. I'm normally a very positive individual, particularly about Canada. Uh, I can tell you chapter and verse about the quality of the engineering, quality of the graduates that come out of Canada. And they, they are not just world class, they are the best. But competing with engineers out of China at five, six thousand dollars a year, competing with India at nine, ten thousand dollars a year, and these are good graduates. We have worldly people here, we have to this day clusters, but they're dying. And that's, I, I find that extremely sad. In my own case, I start about three or four companies a year, and I'd love to tell you that the Canadian environment is attractive to startup companies, attractive to VCs, but, it, but it's not. It simply is not, and at least half of those now are outside the country. That also makes me sad. 
Well, I want to thank you. I want to thank uh, Terry Matthews, uh, CADIS National Spokesman, for really telling you what it is, how it is, and also giving us uh, some very good insights on the line items that we have to address in Canada. And uh, what I've taken away from this is there's a lot of people that help have, have to help us boil the ocean. So we'd like to get the number one. Uh, Mr. Matthews has given us some great insights and I think it's time that we created the team to do it. So Terry, thank you for joining us. Uh, we appreciate your leadership. Well, you know, it's my pleasure. And if we can lift that story, make people action-oriented to get it right, we'll all benefit.